Kitten Internet. Kitten right there. Um, welcome to FTL, or Faster Than Light. I'm Aether Spoon, and I had mentioned that I was going to be doing a run of this, or two or three. Um, so I want to introduce you to the game. Isun's being adorable, he just got up from a nap. Uh, so for reference, for me today is Saturday, August 15th, 2020, that is, in the year of hell. And yeah, um, this is FTL. FTL is a roguelike game, or roguelite game, I should say. Which, Rogue, for reference, is one of those genre-defining games, kind of like Civilization was genre-defining for the 4X series. Um, and thus, the last game that I played could be called a Civ-like game. Uh, Rogue is a really, really old, uh, technically older than me, if I remember correctly, um, action RPG. That has a very large amount of randomization. Everything is procedurally generated and randomized at the start of every game. That's kind of become an entire genre in of itself. I need to adjust my screen a little bit. Um, that way I'm I'm looking at FTL right now. That way it's not that big of a difference, eyes wise. Um So FTL is a game where you are a part of the Federation, and the Rebels have just... Uh, actually, the game will actually give a better intro because I'm trying to remember. Anyway, um, what you do is that you choose one of a list of ships. Now, if you are brand new to the game and you're running, running it for the first time, your only option is the Kestrel here. This is the basic ship. There's nothing wrong with the basic ship, mind you. It's just, this is the basic ship that you have. Um, so, Advanced Edition is an expansion, a free expansion to FTL. So if you were to buy the game for FTL right now, you would have the Advanced Edition version. Um, it's available on Steam, GOG, their own website, a whole bunch of different places. I personally recommend GOG just because I tend to prefer their policies for buying this. What I'm actually playing is the Steam version at the moment. I own both. It's just, for some weird reason, I had minor issues recording the GOG version, even though they're the same game. Probably my computer. So, you choose a ship, of which there are, I want to say it's like 18 or 20 different ships. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so that is 28 ships. So, you have to unlock each and every one of these, and I have unlocked everything. I, I've i played quite a bit of FTL at this point. Um, while the game itself won't say it, because unfortunately for me, I overwrote my save game at some point. Like, there was a Steam Sync related issue. So, it only shows me normal and easy victories, even though I know for a fact I've beaten it on hard once. Only once, mind you. I'm... That was a fluke victory, but I do remember that. Um, so you can see that I have various top scores. Strangely enough, my fifth top score is actually one that I did not succeed on. But I got to the eighth sector, which is the end of the game. I have different achievements, of which I am missing one achievement. Boarding objective successful of the in-game achievements. Steam, they recently added additional achievements, achievements, achievements to Steam. And there's a couple of them that I don't have. Um, there's one hidden achievement. If... Yep, one hidden achievement. Boarding objective successful, which I've actually done that achievement before. It's just that that was from Corrupted Save and also Diplomatic Immunity, which is an achievement for a specific ship. So, um, going back to new game, you'll notice that there's actually achievements over here for ships as well. And there's three per, and it claims that I've never finished this one. I totally have, for reference. Uh, I have finished everything. Oh, um, down here it'll actually tell you which um, ships have you achieved victory on. For instance, for these ships, I've achieved victory with type B and type C. Which I'll explain in a bit, but not type A. So what it is, is that each of these ships 
you'll have, I'll use the casual for an example, you'll have three different layouts. Uh, there's two ships, there's only two layouts, that's why there's 28 ships total. Um, where it's the same ship, so you see that the outer part is the same, only with like a palette swap different, not even just a palette swap, whatever, anyway. Um, but there's different layouts. And base FTL only has two layouts per ship. And then one of these ships is brand new entirely for Advanced Edition, along with all layout C. So, um, you get to see your crew members. The names are random, so you'll notice as I'm bouncing back and forth, it changes the random names. Um, the crew members are identical, though. So, for instance, for Kestrel A, you have three human crew members. Humans, as of the Advanced Edition of the game, do actually have an ability, which is they learn things faster. So this is only sort of an RPG. Um, your character, your crew, I should say, do level up, and humans level up faster than normal. That's their only ability. In non-advanced edition, humans did not have a special ability. This sucked because they're, well, yeah, that means they have no advantages or disadvantages. There was another crew member type that actually had no disadvantages and had some type of an advantage, meaning that humans were strictly worse. Blech. So, um, you also start with various weaponry. Uh, in this case, the Kestrel starts with the Artemis missile. Missiles are special compared to regular weapons, which that's this Burst Laser Mark II. There's a large variety of weapons in the game, and if you use the optional expansion, or unofficial expansion, not optional expansion, the unofficial expansion, which I'll probably have a later run doing just because I really like the alternate expansion. There's far more weapons in the um, unofficial expansion. Uh, that's Captain's Edition for reference. I don't recommend playing Captain's Edition until you have beaten FTL and beaten it on, I'll go with normal for most ships. So again, hard is something that they added into FTL. Um, as of the Advanced Edition. Back when I was first playing, I used to joke about the game that the game had two difficulties. They call it easy and normal, it's actually hard and harder. <laughs> um, FTL is not an easy game. And I am going to fail runs. Even if I don't play on hard and just play on normal or even easy, I will fail easy runs even. So that's the reason why I'm assuming I'm going to need multiple runs for this. Because, well... Not perfect at the game. Nobody is, as far as I'm aware. Mm. Also, another hallmark of roguelike games is that saving is interesting. The game prevents you from using chronomancy. Now, you could actually like back up your save and re-import it or garbage like that. I don't recommend it. I had done it before because I was playing on an unstable computer at the time. That's the reason why I ended up with a slightly messed up save is because... My computer was corrupted, it would randomly corrupt my save file, and I'd restore the save file back, and yeah, bad things were to happen. So, that means that we will be doing this without saving. Now, we can save and exit, so it's not like I can't stop playing. It's not old style like NES games or anything like that. But it does mean that I have to be careful. No matter what, I can't undo my wrong moves. On the plus side, the game itself is not very long. I think a normal entire run through without anything horrible happening is a couple of hours. So I would expect each run to maybe be two or three videos long. Don't know. I'm talking quite a bit more, whereas I don't normally talk at all while I play FTL. In fact, normally I'm not even paying attention to anything else. FTL is actually one of those games that I can't listen to something at the same time. So, we shall see. So, what I will do for the first run is hit random ship. And I will play whatever that ship is. I'll decide on the difficulty once I see it. Some ships I'm extremely good at. Some ships I'm horrible at. Which means that if I choose a ship that I'm horrible at, I may go with an easy difficulty. Whereas if I choose a ship that I'm reasonable at, I'll probably choose normal. And if it's a ship that I'm extremely good at, I'll probably choose hard just so I can fail. Um, maybe I'll choose normal. Don't know. Ah, let's choose random ship. And Adjudicator A. 
I have not had a victory with Adjudicator A. So, the Adjudicator is a Zoltan ship. Zoltan, which are these folk here, are some of the best units in the game. Um, they provide power to their own location. What that means... So, I'd actually have to start it, so I'm going to explain other things first. So, you start with three Zoltan, which are, in my opinion, the best crew in the game. They're not always the crew that you want to pick up at any given time. But if I were to just choose, okay, which crew is best crew, it would be a tie between Zoltan and the new advanced content, uh, Lanius. So, we have various different stats for our ship. We start with two pips of shield, which is pretty typical for most of these ships. One pip of engine, which is pretty awful. One pip of oxygen, which is typical. Three pips of weaponry. It's, I think it's slightly above average for starting. One pip of med bay, which is typical. One pip of piloting, which I don't know if there's any ship with more than one pip of piloting to start. Same with sensors. And two pips of doors. That's actually better than normal. Cool. Um, we start with a Zoltan shield. So all Zoltan ships start with a Zoltan shield, I think. Unless a C starts. No, they all start with Zoltan shield. Zoltan shields are special shields. Which is that they have... Well, I'll, I can only explain it when we actually start playing. But they are special shields that go above and beyond whatever your shield rating of your ship is. Zoltan shields are great. It delays the enemy from being able to hit you. Which is important. It also stops missile attacks. Speaking of missiles, we have Leto missiles, which are garbage. Leto missiles are generally the worst missiles in the game. They're pretty fast, but they're garbage. We're going to want to replace these pretty quickly. We have four slots for weaponry. Um, every ship has four slots for weaponry. Um, these are absolutely going to be ditched as soon as we can. We also have a Halberd beam, which is a slow charge time beam weapon well let's just get into it so i can explain things i'm gonna take this one on easy just because i've never beaten this particular one um i have beaten layout two quite a bit looks like type b and type c sorry layout b not layout two um type b and type c are my preferred for this it could just be that i never bothered beating it should go normal Nah, let's go easy. Let's start this on an easy way. You can actually increase font sizes. I didn't realize that. So the data you carry is vital to the remaining Federation fleet. You'll need supplies for the journey, so make sure you explore each sector before moving on to the next. But get to the exit before the pursuing rebel fleet can catch up. This is the introduction to the game. So you are the last member of a Federation fleet that got obliterated by the Rebels in a previous sector, and you're running away from the Rebels, trying to get word to the rest of the Federation that something horrible has happened, and they have this mega ship that's going to destroy everything. So yes, you're a part of the Empire, not the Rebellion. So this isn't Star Wars, this is more Star Trek. And... Now it's time for me to start explaining something. Ooh, I have a really low reactor. That that makes sense. That tracks. Oh, crap. I can't power those at once, can I? Ugh. It would take 35 hours. Okay, so let me explain something before I continue. Um, That is the start, no matter what, of every game of FTL. The moment I hit jump is when you get to see the unique parts of this particular run that I don't know yet other than names. So we have Kriz, Zinzin, and Boovy. Cool. We're going to save your stations. So, um... One moment. I'm back. Sorry about that. Isin decided to go chomp on some plastic. Isn't that right, kitty cat? Uh, he's deciding to be camera shy. Well, I can just move him closer. Maybe. Here's an oh, and I decided to put my camera here just because it was blocking the least number of things on screen. Uh, we'll find out if this is actually the right spot or if I should move it a little bit later. No, this is my food, not yours, Hipsoon. I don't have any snacks left in the house other than cheese sticks, so... 
a cheese stick. So, this is our ship. There are many like it, but this one is ours. So, we have the engines bay. Engines is how we go. It also charges our FTL driver faster than light drive, which allows us to jump to the next sector. Um, we have weapons. Weapons are the pew pews that we have over here. Shields. Shields allow us to not die. Shields are good. We have camera control way up here for some reason. This is a really weird layout of a ship. Camera control, or sensors, if I want to be exact, allow us to... First tier of sensors allow us to see our own ship. The second tier of sensors allowed us to start getting information about the enemy ships. So, that's always nice. We've got door control. Doors allow us to stop intruders from going around places. Um, if we had the first level of doors, I believe, let's see. In here we can see, yeah, normal doors just barely slow intruders down. We have blast doors, which will slow them down a decent amount. They actually have to break down the door in order to be able to continue. That would be very useful for reasons that I'll explain as we go. Um, the next level up is very useful, and the level up past that is basically impenetrable. You can't go to four by buying an upgrade. Once more, a lot of these things I'll explain as we go. We have oxygen. Life support's very important for a ship with oxygen-breathing organisms like us. But it's also important for those borders. So we may randomly decide to just open up some doors and vent atmosphere in order to start damaging borders. Uh, oxygen systems are also the thing responsible for us to slowly bring this back. You'll notice it went from pink stripes to pink. And it will start lightening up as I talk. That just means that more and more oxygen is going into the room. We can speed it up by opening up everything else, which will try to equalize the oxygen levels in the entire ship. So it will speed up how fast this goes up. You'll notice that it's barely pink now. We're also at 99% of the 100% of oxygen required. And I'm only able to open the doors because I have door control. We have med bay. Med bay, this is a three slot med bay. This square is taken up. Which means that we can send all of our units to med bay. And they will stand there. If you're in med bay, you will regenerate hit points. Relatively quickly, actually. Um, even just one pip in the med bay is generally enough to be able to fight in combat with another border uh, a unit that's bordered... Ah, Boarded your ship, and you probably won't take any significant damage because you're healing faster than the damage. Ready back to their original spots. And finally, we have piloting. You always have to have somebody in piloting in order to be able to move. So, for instance, if I move this person out, it specifically says, hey, look, you don't have a pilot. What you need is you need a pilot standing there, and you need some power in your engines. As long as you have both fine. We have power in our engines. We have a pilot, so we can move. Uh, explaining some other things. This is our hull. Our hull has 30 hit points. Every hull has 30 hit points to start. It will never go above 30. It may go below 30, but it will never go above 30. Here's our scrap. Think of it as money. You use scrap to buy things. Uh, occasionally you'll have trades of things that have nothing to do with scrap, but in general, you use scrap to buy things. These are our shields. The blue bubbles indicate our normal shields, and then the green things below it are the Zoltan energy shield. The Zoltan shield will be hit first. So once the Zoltan shield drops to zero, we have regular shields. Regular shields regenerate frequently. So we'll be able to take a hit, shield will go down, and shield will come back up. Again, think Star Trek. We have our engines. Uh, this shows us our evasion percentage. The higher level our engines are, the better our evasion. Excuse me, the better our evasion gets. Also, if the person in engines levels up, we'll get better evasion as well. Uh, these are our crew members. Tell right now that they all have 70 hit points. 100 hit points is normal for reference. That's what a human has. 
Zoltan have lower hit points than normal, but they provide their own energy. Um, they you would also by mousing over here you would see what ranks they have. Everybody at the start of the game starts off at level zero everything, so that's normal. Um, this is our ship to be able to upgrade things? It costs us scrap to be able to upgrade. Our ship has next to nothing in power. It's because it's a Zoltan ship, and you start with Zoltan that have their own power. That's fairly typical. We're not going to upgrade anything probably for the first entire sector. Um, it's my standard strategy for this type of game. Look at our crew. Now these are the details. So it provides power to the occupied system. So in other words, because I have a crew member standing in weapons, I get plus one power. Um, max health is reduced to 70, so I lose 30% of my hit points. These are not good units to fight in melee combat. We're going to want somebody who is. And when they die, they explode and deal 15 damage to all enemy crew in the same building. We don't want them to die. So we're going to try to not let that happen. And then here's our weapons. We have four cargo, which is normal. I don't think there's any ships with fewer than four cargo. We can hold up to three augmentations. And once we have a drone system, if we even bother, we can hold up to four different types of drones. Or four different drones, not necessarily types of drones. Anyway, we also have fuel. We need one fuel for every jump that we do. We currently have 16 fuel. I believe normal. I believe easy starts with more fuel than normal, but I could be wrong on that. I'm not an expert on the game. I'm just fairly good. We have 12 missiles. That's the downside with using missiles is that it's a consumable resource, unlike laser beams and laser bursts. Uh, missiles and bombs both consume missiles. We also have drone parts. Since we don't have a drone system, drone parts don't do anything for us. Uh, each time that we deploy a drone, it costs a drone part, though. So it's another consumable resource. So it's something we need to consider. Let's go ahead and jump in. This is our system map for this particular solar system. We are currently here. That's what this symbol indicates. We'll start orbiting the uh, solar system that we're in. Sorry, this is the sector. Um, consider this like a galaxy. We need to get here. And you'll notice when I mouse over things, you'll see these dotted lines. This indicates what types of paths that we can take from each individual sector. Um, FTL is using the concept of faster than light travel to bounce between different beacons. So um, this is more Babylon 5 style of faster than light travel, actually, where you need to have a beacon in a system to allow somebody to go from one sector to another sector. So we're here. We want to get to here, but we don't want to do it in the least number of beacons, because each one of these locations can have something unique in it. Um, with our sensors level, all that we can see is if there's a shop bordering us, which there currently isn't. We're going to want to try to find a shop so we can hopefully buy some upgrades. And remember, I had mentioned our weaponry is terrible. I want better weapons. Um, after... One jump, I think, is when we'll start noticing it. Um, Easy has more jumps than normal. Uh, we'll start seeing the Rebellion advance from the left side of the screen to the right side of the screen. What we want to do is stay ahead of the Rebellion. If we don't stay ahead, we end up with an extremely difficult fight in every sector that we are behind. And we get basically no rewards for doing so. The only reward we get is one fuel, if I remember correctly. Enough to be able to jump to the next sector. We really don't want to be left behind. So, what we do want to do is jump around. And what I do at the start is just start mousing over things to see what types of paths that I have. So it looks like I basically have three paths. The first one is going up at the top. So we'd go here, then here, then here. And then we can decide from here which of these three sectors we go to. If we need to get out fast, we can just go down here, then to the exit. Most likely, I'd probably loop around a little bit. Maybe there's some useful things. Uh, the exit has plenty of connectivity, so I don't need to worry about accidentally getting into a dead end. Second option would be going down below. This is a little risky, because we're going to be staying on the left side of the screen for a decently long period of time. But most likely, we'd end up going like this. And if one of these sectors is bad, we can't really turn around. 
I like making sure that I can always jump between multiple sectors, which is why I'm going to go toward the middle route instead. So, um, there are different terrain or events that can happen inside of sectors. Let's go to one and find out. So this is a nebula. Uh, specifically, this is a nebula with bad things in it. Um, I have it paused at the moment. So nebula means that sensors do not function properly. You'll notice that our camera seems to be down and it has a null on power. It's temporarily disabled due to enemy or location. Our location, we don't have anything. Unfortunately, we're also in a plasma storm. Plasma storms reduce the amount of power that we have. Remember, we're already really low on power to begin with. We have even less power than normal. This is bad. This is really bad for us, actually. Um, we're going to have problems. So we only have three power for the entire ship. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to take my med bay offline because we don't really need a med bay until we actually have injuries. So I'm not too concerned about the med bay being online. I usually keep it offline. And we're actually going to disable life support. So we actually have real shields. Uh, yeah, actually, let's wait a little bit on that because we have the Zoltan shield to be able to take on some damage initially. And it looks like when I'm looking at the rebel ship, they only have like this crappy gun. Which means they're only going to be firing one hit every so often. I think we're probably okay for a bit. Okay. So, this game is real-time-ish. You can pause at any time for combat. And I frequently pause. And while you're paused, you can aim at things. Like, for I use keyboard quite a bit for this game. And I recommend getting used to the keyboard commands for this, for those that may want to be able to play FTL in the future. It lets you react quicker and react on impulse rather than having to pause and reevaluate constantly. You can always pause, but there'll be times where you just don't want to. What we're going to do is that we're going to fire on their shields. Going to unpausing. So yeah, they only have this one weapon. I believe fires once. About to find out. All right, their shields are now down. So what I'm going to do is turn that weapon off. Turn on our helpert beam. So beam weaponry has both advantages and disadvantages. Their advantage is the fact that they don't just hit one room, they hit a line of rooms. So like if I put the beam like this, it will hit this room, this room, and this room. It will do one damage to, or I think helper beam might be two damage. I can't check right now. Um, it'll do damage to the room itself, so it will knock out their oxygen in this case, and also deal damage to their hull, their hulls being up here. Their hull drops to zero, the ship explodes. Um, there are other ways to defeat an encounter. Um, randomly, an enemy will pop up saying, help, help, we surrender, and they'll offer something for you where you can keep fighting them. And there's also, you can kill everybody aboard the ship. This is not a ship that's going to be a boarding crew, unless if I start recruiting a whole bunch of better units, so we're not going to worry about that. So we just took one hit to our um, Zoltan shield, which is fine. So we have a four out of five, and it regenerates at the end of combat. So we need to... Basically, we can't have anybody in shields right now, because we need all the power we can at our weapons. Oh, I should actually, you know, do that instead, because that's actually hitting five rooms. Beam weaponry requires some creativity. Um, you do have to... Uh, by default, you have to target... Down to three, that's fine. Again, this weapon's really slow. You can actually see the um, cooldown going over on the left side compared to here. You can tell that this weapon is probably about twice the speed as this one. Which I think this is nine seconds and this is 18. That makes sense. Um, by default, you have to aim your weapon each time that you fire it. So for instance, after this beam goes off, which I just killed the ship, um, I would have to re-aim it again. You can hold down control and have it pick a spot and basically continually fire on that spot. I usually don't use that unless if I'm in a situation with certain types of weapons. I'm not in this case. I'm not to mention they're destroyed, so we're done here. 
The ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. Two missiles, one drone part, 25 scrap. Alright. And now we can jump again. We see that there's a store up there. That's not a great spot for us, because we have very little scrap. We're not going to be able to buy much of anything from that store. I'm actually not going that way. I'm going to go this way instead. Uh, the other advantage to nebulas is that it slows down the rebel fleet by going through them most times. Um, there is an exception to that, and if it comes up, I'll explain it. But yeah, uh, at this point, we have as much time as we want. There's a danger going on, so we can't necessarily do everything that we would normally be able to do. For instance, we still don't have our power. Um, oh yeah, I was going to look. 17 seconds, 9 seconds. So I was 1 second off. So this takes 9 seconds to charge up. This takes 17 seconds to charge up. And it does 2 damage per room hit. So by hitting those 5 rooms, we were doing 10 damage to that ship. Which is a huge amount of damage. Beam weapons are great. But the problem is that they don't go through shields very well. So, for instance, if they had one shield bar, which they did, um, I would instead do one point of damage per room hit, which I've just halved the number of damage just by one shield. Ships later on will have two, three, or even four shields. Beam weaponry really needs something else along with it. And right now, we have crappy missiles. Missiles ignore shields. Normal shields. They don't ignore Zoltan shields. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump down here. All right, we are no longer in a plasma storm. We're still in the, um, whatever it was called. A pirate ship arrives shortly after you. Judging from the fact that it's tempting to avoid your ship, you assume it's a smuggler trying to stay away from beacons. We have option one, we can attack the pirate. Or option two, ignore the ship. If we were having issues with our ship, like say it hull was down to two or something like that, we might want to ignore the ship. In general, you don't want to ignore ships if you can help it. And in fact, you actually want to maximize the number of jumps that you have for any given sector so you get more rewards so you can upgrade your ship better to be able to take things on. So we're going to be attacking for reference. Uh, I'm just hitting pause. I should change the setting to auto pause at the start of battle. Power up your weapons and move in to engage. So we can see that they have two weapons. Uh, looks like two different beam weapons. We have our power back, so uh, they have one shield. Actually, they have one shield, so we could probably just beam them instead. Oh, I really wish I had one more power and weaponry because then I can also use the missiles, take out their weapons, so I don't have to worry about getting hit. Uh, oh well. I'm doing it this way. But we're just powering our beam. So you'll notice that the color changed a little bit. That's because regular shields came back online. They were offline from the previous area. We're going to be fired on before they'll fire on us. Our weapons are slow. So we've taken three damage to result on field. That first one was a heavy laser cannon, which does two, two damage instead of one. The second one was a light laser. They're both really crappy lasers, too. All right, we should start planning our line. Yeah, I think four rooms is as much as we're going to be able to get. We could choose our four rooms, but we're only going to be able to get four. I'm going to go like that. I'm going to start in shields, which will knock their shields down, then do two damage to their weapons. All right, so they're trying to run away from us. Because they recognize that we're about to destroy them. They're going to be destroyed before they even get a chance to run away. But normally, you now see up here it says, Enemy FTL charging. So it's charging its jump drive, the same that we're doing over here. Once its ship reaches the end of its jump, it will leave. And bad things can happen when they leave. Uh, in this case, I don't think anything bad would happen other than we don't get a reward. But, just like our ship, if you knock out either their engines or their helm... They can't charge their FTL, so it would say enemy FTL delayed or something like that. Yep, enemy FTL delayed. They hail you. We realize your ship is no match. For, or we realize our ship is no match for yours. If you let us go, we'll make it worth your while. They're offering two missiles, one drone part, and eleven scrap. 
Usually I'll accept their offers if they offer a decent amount of fuel, just because fuel is something I will always need. So I'm going to ignore their pleas and just destroy them, which will happen almost instantly. Yep. So instead, I received 17 scrap. Uh, I probably should have taken the other one, but I had no way of knowing what the ultimate reward was. So we now have 72 scrap, and we can see more areas. We still don't see the rebel fleet. That is interesting. I'm kind of thinking instead I should take a detour. Yeah, I'm going to do that. We're going to jump back this way. Oh, but so we've got a new type of um, encounter. Namely, that we're in the middle of an asteroid field. Uh, or asteroid belt. So, asteroid belt means that there's going to be random asteroids just hitting both of our ships. They'll bounce off of shields, but that means that our shields are going to be taking damage that we're not necessarily expecting. It will happen to both of our ships. And in this case, the enemy ship, you'll notice, doesn't have any shields. So this actually encounter is great for us. That hit my wrist, so I have a cut across my wrist. Um, so yeah, this particular event happening in the sector is a good thing for us. That is an auto surveyor. Auto ships are automated scouts, so there's no oxygen aboard their ship. There's no crew aboard their ship. You just have to destroy them. They're my least favorite type of enemies to fight, because my typical strategy is boarding-based strategies, which this ship will almost certainly not be doing. But, this won't be bad. See, it's already doing damage to him. Did damage to us. Oh, their helm's down. They're really screwed now. Um, there's a chance that their ship might be destroyed before we even get a shot off. Um, they've got missiles, and they have an ion cannon. Ion cannons suck, um, to deal with. We'll show. So, yep, their ion blast just got hit. Ion blasts do a lot of damage to Zoltan shields. So, that one did two damage to a Zoltan shield. Um, I think they can do up to five, something like that. Normally, if an Ion Blast hits a... If it hits your regular shield, it will not just drop your shield because it's doing damage to it, but also cause it to not be able to come back for a certain period of time. It has stun. Ion Cannon stun sucks. If you don't have shields up and it hits a room on your ship, it will stun that room. So, for instance, if it stuns your weaponry, your weapon charge will start dropping during the stun instead and you can get stun locked. It's a very effective strategy for you to use on the enemy. One nice thing about this game is that in general, with a very minor exception of the final boss, you can do anything you see the enemy doing. And then the missile hits our shield. I think they might actually survive long enough. Yep, they're dead now though. All right, the ship explodes, leaving behind a substantial collection of useful scrap material. More scrap, please. So, we have to wait until the drive charges, because we are still getting bombarded. Now that our uh, Zoltan shield's down, we just have the regular shield, which is going to be hit frequently. Normally, this is a great way to train up units, because if there's somebody in working shields, they would actually be gaining levels as this happens. So you can actually just sit here for a long time. We're safe, by the way. As long as we're not being fired on and our shield system's okay, we'll regenerate shields faster than we get hit. Notice, however, that we've actually gained a little bit of levels in piloting and engines over here, and a really tiny amount in weapons. The piloting and engines both go up whenever we dodge a projectile. And in that fight, we actually dodged one of the attacks from the enemy, and we've dodged one of the rock throws. So that's good to know. We're going to jump now, though. Now you can see the Rebel advance. It comes across as an arc. Basically, do not go into this area. This area here is where the Rebel... And it's showing where the Rebels will end up at the start of the next turn. I'm talking a lot. Nearby planet shows signs of habitation and great beauty. Rudimentary automated defense system is looping its message into space. Warning, 
quarantine level five in effect under FHA Act 22, Article 11.1, warning, quarantine level five in effect. So basically, this system, the planet's quarantined. There's no encounter. There's nothing here. No bad thing. There's no good thing. I mean, it's bad for the population of the planet, of course, but that's not our problem. However, there's a distress signal coming from the next sector, which indicates that there's something interesting happening there. The distress signal could be a trap. Entirely possible it's a trap. Entirely possible it's somebody who needs help. It could just be somebody who's run out of fuel. Now, you'll notice that there's this warning line, and then these two beacons are glowing. The reason why is that the rebels are about to take control over it. That indicates the sectors that you really don't want to fly into. What I tend to do, especially for these early sectors, is to basically sit around moving places until this is about to hit the exit. I will exit right before that happens, at least ideally. We're going to the Distress Beacon, though. You locate a nearby human mining colony where an unknown disease has spread virulently. They're setting up a quarantine to contain it, but a riot has broken out. So our options are, one, we can send in our crew to help control the crowds, or option two, we can ignore their request and move on. Sometimes we will have what's called blue text. It's where you get an option number C, as myself and my group like to put it, where it's an option that's not quite normal. All of these types of encounters are random, and there are chances of good things and chances of bad things happening for each of them. If we had, in this case, a certain crew member species, we might have blue text that allows us to do this safely, where we have a minimized or even negated chance of failure. I am not going to send a crew member in because I happen to know that the bad stuff, and if you think about it, the bad stuff makes sense, would be that you have an infected crew member and they die. Because, oh yeah, yeah crew members permanently die. All the time. So I'm going to ignore request and move on, which sucks, but I have so little in the way of crew, I can't deal with it. I'm sorry, folks, in the distress beacon, just not going to happen. Now we're back in a nebula again. Heavily damaged Federation ship is hiding in the nebula at this beacon. Before we have time to make contact with them, they fade into the nebula. Our options are we can attempt to follow and help them, or we can keep our position because they can handle themselves. Blue text might be if we had advanced sensors, we might be able to find them. I'm going to attempt to follow. I don't think it's a very high chance of success. You get lucky and find them floating not too deep into the nebula. Thrilled to be found by friendlies, they come aboard and abandon their wrecked ship. We gain Schultz. So we now have a human aboard. That is excellent news. Because we can now move our pilot Zoltan out to our shields. So now we have plus one power on shields. Before, the Zoltan extra power is just useless at the helm. The helm doesn't actually need power. So we have one extra power going on. I want to do... First, before I do that, let's check. There is not a shop, or not a store nearby. So yes, I am going to upgrade that. I normally don't like upgrading before the end of the first sector, but the fact that I can't power both of my weapons and the fact that I... Nest would necessarily need to power both of my weapons is painful. I'm going to do that. Now, as I mentioned before, I like bouncing around a bunch, so I'm not going to just go straight to the exit. I'm also not going to go to these two because it would be bam, bam, exit. What I'm going to do is going to go back here. You detect rebel automated ship nearby. Just not engage and seems to be patrolling around a long-range sensor station. So, our options are, one, we can attack the automated ship to get at the sensor station, or two, we can avoid provoking the ship. We get a little bit of information about the ship as well. It looks like they have a drone system and a weapon system. They have one shield, seven hull. I can see what weapon they have, though. That's a beam weapon. As I've mentioned, beam weapons don't work very well when you have shields up. So, I'm not concerned about their weapon, I'm more concerned about their drone system. But I'm still going to attack them. Alright, yep, that's what I was afraid of on their drone system. So, they have 
this little pew pew. This pew pew is just going to, it's an enemy combat drone, or little pew pew. It's just going to repeatedly attack random spots on my ship. It's relatively fast in attacking, which means it's going to drain our Zoltan shield pretty quick. But more importantly, it could drop our shields long enough for that beam to do some damage. So what we want to do is take out their drone bay as fast as we can. Their beam weapon itself is useless against us. We do not care. Oh, and their pew pews will have the same chance of failing as anything else. But you notice, hey, look, I finally fired my quick weapon, and they've already taken three shots on my, whatchamacallit, um, Zoltan shield. The reason why it's like, I need to destroy that fast. So, now it's down to orange, which means that it's damaged, but not necessarily destroyed. On a normal ship, they would have crew members that would be repairing the particular spot. This is an auto ship, which means that there's no crew. The auto ship does very slowly regenerate, but the keyword is slowly. I'm not concerned about that. Yes, I can. That's worth trying. All right. So their shields are down. They're damaged, not actually down. Their piloting's down, their engines are down. So they're sitting ducks at this point. It does not matter what I hit. And I'm not going to waste another missile on them because there's no reason to. They're completely harmless to me. As we go along in further sectors, the game gets significantly more difficult. Sector 1's the easy sector. Think of it like a tutorial sector. So we access the recent scans from the unguarded station. My map has been updated with details of the surrounding area, so we now see more of the sector than we did before. So, for instance, we now know that that is the only store piece of crap. Um, there's possible ships in these areas, so if we specifically wanted to avoid ships, we just don't go there. And that would be viable. I don't care whether we hit ships or not. Actually, this scan might only be for ships now that I think about it. This one also has a pulsar in it. Pulsars suck. You don't want to fight in a pulsar if you can help it. So my plan is to go there, then there, then there. And if I have time, I'll hit some. I'll hit this and exit. I probably won't. It depends on the events that are going on. Either way, we're going here. On completing your jump, you receive a message from a nearby ship. Greetings and welcome to our beacon. For a small fee, we'll let you continue. Bye. So they are threatening me. So once more, I notice that they have a beam weapon and a drone system. So it's probably going to be a similar situation than last one. They're pirates. They have crew. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a way of just killing all the crew and taking the loot off the ship. Generally, boarding strategies give you better... It's a higher risk for higher reward. Um, no, I'm not going to put their toll. That's dumb. Too bad. You'll regret this decision. No, I'm pretty sure you're going to regret my decision. Oh, this is even better. So we have a beam drone. Oh, no, that's a regular combat drone. Never mind. I thought that was a beam drone. It's like beam drone with beam ship. That can't even damage us. So once more, we're going to aim for their drone system. All right, their drone systems hurt. That is what I'm going to be beaming. So remember, they have troops that are repairing things. Had, past tense. You can tell that beams are really nice weapons. You just have to target things correctly. And that comes from experience. Not much. You just... The idea is that if possible, if their shields uh, if their shields are in a corner of the ship somewhere, you want to start from their shields as the beam and go out and hit as many rooms as you can. That's assuming you want to try to destroy the ship. If you're trying to do something else, that's a different story. The beam weapons aren't as useful on hurting strategy ships. We don't have one of those. All right. There are no stores up here. That sucks. Really hoping it was lying to me.
Just because there's no ship here doesn't mean there isn't something else here. You arrive at the system to see a pirate ship pursuing a civilian ship. You detect messages from the civilian ship on a distress frequency. So I'm going to aid them because I'm heroic. You power up your weapons and engage the pirate ship. All right, so there's something, there's a couple of somethings new here, and this is going to hurt. So first off, they do have weaponry. They have a blaster and a bomb unit. Their bomb units teleport bombs on your ship. It's very similar to the way missiles work. Only usually bombs do different types of things. Like it might be an ion bomb or it will ionize a room. Remember, missiles and bombs ignore shields. However, they can't use them against the Zoltan shield very easily. So that's not generally a problem for us right now. They also have a teleporter. Teleporters will... Basically, this ship, this enemy ship, is a border. They're going to start trying to teleport units onto our ship. On the plus side, Zoltan shields block mission. So we don't have to worry as much about the borders as long as we knock out their teleporter. So... What I'm going to do is I am going to aim toward... I think weapons... That's not a particularly fast weapon, and their bomb is not going to be very useful right now. So now they're going to start repairing their weapons. Fortunately, we can't hit both of those rooms. Um, we could go like... Could go like that, but remember, we're only going to be doing one point of damage because shields are still up. What I'm going to do is wait a little moment or two so yeah they teleport a bomb aboard except that because we have our zoltan shield it's just hitting the shield so i'm intentionally holding off on the beam until my missile hits first i want to take out that shield now i want to fire and hit those four it's going to destroy the ship you notice where it said resist that's because this type of ship is what's called a rock ship Rocks are one of the species in FTL, and rock ships have the unique ability of being able to resist hull damage randomly. Um, just like our ship has the unique ability of having Zoltan shields. They're dead. We're not. The pirate ship breaks apart. You hasten to contact the civilian ship. It's a good thing you came up when you did. We'd be dead now, otherwise. I'm a shipwright, and I'd like to help you because you, like, you helped me. The captain offers to install a piece of equipment on our ship. We gained 12 scrap and a stun bomb. Stun bombs are nice. They're much nicer than our Leto. Um, the downside is the time for charge is higher, I think. Yeah, charge time is 17 seconds. It's the same as our Halberd beam. That's a bit on the slow side. I would rather have another weapon, but I like stun bombs. Stun bombs are very useful against not Zoltan. So I'll keep things the way they are for now. Still no store. A hunch we're not going to get one. So what I like to do is, you can't see me, but I'm actually taking my finger, which is roughly the width of what I'm seeing on the screen, and figure out how many turns I have. There are mods to the game that actually show it to you instead, and I normally run those types of mods, but one, this is a reinstall of the game, and two, I didn't want to run any mods the first time I was going through a run, so I can explain things to you all. Because I've recorded one of these before, only the microphone wasn't working the entire time. That was the very first thing I double-checked. So, we've got one, two, we have... Okay, so we have another two or three jumps before exit's in trouble. I'm going to jump up to... You find a rebel automated scout floating near this beacon. Despite its pristine condition, it appears to be disabled. So we can either download the ship's data stores, which will almost certainly cause a fight, or we can just strip it for any useful scrap and just take loot and run. I'm not too concerned about fighting something that only has five hit points and no hull, or no shields, so I will totally attempt to download the ship's data stores, which we're successful! 
again it's a random chance we got slightly less scrap but we gained more data about the map which i guess we probably didn't really need but we also gained one missile and one drone part instead of three scrap that's generally a good gain although we're not using drones we go down here you spot a rebel ship nearby seems to have been refitted for transport rather than combat doesn't not want seem to want to engage you or your ship well rebel scum give us your goods you prepare to secure their cargo by force they looks like they don't want to fight they are trying to escape so this is the situation i was talking about where they're trying to run away okay so they have an anti-combat drone as their drone so anti-combat drone is just trying to destroy your combat drones we don't have a drone system so the anti-combat drone doesn't think or to us uh their only weapon is a heavy blaster which our regular shields can handle i am not at all concerned about their weaponry i am only concerned about their engines and shield so what i'm going to do is take a pot shot at either piloting or engine I am going to go with piloting for their pot shot. All right, we've taken out their piloting. Their FTL drive is delayed. We're going to set up the helper beam to hit these rooms, starting with shields. That way we knock out their shields first and continuing on. So right now their units are trying to rapidly repair the piloting because all they're trying to do is leap and run away and i'm not going to let them so i'm going to destroy their ship doing it this way ideally i'd be boarding them instead but i don't have a boarding party i don't even have a teleporter on my ship they're dead we gained ooh yes we gained 22 scrap and a flak gun mark one flak guns are my favorite type of weapons in the game um so black guns are something that was added as a result of advanced edition basically so laser cannons use target a specific spot similar to what we've been doing with the missiles and they'll fire pew pews at it um up from one to four laser shots depending on the particular laser cannon black guns on the other hand target an area and just fire random garbage at it it's very useful for taking out shields as long as you're not trying to do precise damage which means our flat gun is going to be a nice pairing with our halberd beam because what we want to do is take out shields which flat guns will hit first and then start just beaming the crap out of their ship so flat guns are about the best that we can find unfortunately they require more power than what we have right now still good to have and we have the capacity all right we need to leave because if we were to go here, which we could, then the exit will be covered up by the warning section. We don't want to deal with that. Remember, very dangerous battle. And to give you an idea, if we fight the rebel fleet, we're not fighting a battle that's normal for sector one. We're more like fighting a battle that's normal for three plus sectors ahead. We are not equipped for that. So we're going to go to the exit. I've been recording for an hour and I've only gone through one sector. That's how much explanation I'm doing. So well, maybe three episodes per is going to be a bit of a long shot. It's probably going to be more like. Who knows? Maybe we'll speed up. You've activated. You've arrived at the long range beacon. When the FTL drive is charged, you can jump to the next sector. Now we have an encounter in this area. A ship with a conspicuous with conspicuous pirate markings and orbiting in a nearby moon, broadcasting a simple message claiming to have equipment for sale. All right, so we can hail them, we can attack them, or we can jump away. Let's go ahead and hail them. Ship responds, yes, we have extensive st an extensive stock. Come aboard and see our wares. So, we can dock with their ship, because if they're telling the truth, we totally need a shop right now. That sounds awesome. Or we can just go, this doesn't smell like GTFO. I'm going to trust them. This is probably a bad idea. A human in an exquisite suit invites you on board. Welcome to my ship. We specialize in drones of all kinds. Can I interest you in any? We don't need drones of anything, so we're probably just going to say no. But this was a positive result. Oh, oh I'm sorry to hear that. Pleasant journeys. Once back on your helm, a series of explosions rocks your ship. 
the pirate ship has powered its weapons. He received the message, you shouldn't have wasted our time, Captain. They dealt damage to our hull, caught our engines on fire. Oh, this is not good. This is really not good. Okay, three of you evacuate there. We're going to flush that area out. Oh, this is really bad. This is why I don't like the ship design. So normally what I would do is that, um, come to think, probably not gonna do that. Um, first stage. There, set those spots. Um, normally what I would do is that I'd go, oh crap, there's a fire. Oh, actually there's a fire over here. So I'll use that as an example. Crap, there's a fire, quick, atmosphere it. That way there's no oxygen in the room and the fire goes out because there's nothing for it to burn. Um, unfortunately, you'll notice that there's no way of getting like, at, or no way of depleting the atmosphere all the way back here without depleting it everywhere else. And that's gonna suck. So what I'm going to do is try to repair this. This is a punctured hull. That was a really bad combination of things that happened to us, unfortunately. Also, they have teleporters, because of course they do. So we're going to try to repair this room as fast as we can. I'm going to give it as much oxygen as we can. Hey, soon, get down. Um, again, normally this is what I'd be doing. It's out of oxygen, so it's going to go away really quickly. Luckily, we have some improved doors, so it's less of a problem. But while we're repairing this, we don't have them working weapons, which means it takes even longer for our things to charge. Also, you'll notice that I'm down to three on this because our weapon system was also damaged. Um, that sucks. I'm not going to bother with missiles then. What I'm going to end up doing is hitting starting of the shields and going out. I'm probably going to... This... With a different best bet. We could have done that with the last one of these. Got it. Oh, well. So, that one just disappeared. So, we can repressurize that room. Not too concerned about that room, though. I'm much more concerned about this one. I need this repaired. So right now, we're a sitting duck. We cannot dodge. So, everything is going to hit us. That's going to be two hits on our Zoltan shield. Luckily, we have a Zoltan shield. This room's just completely on fire now. All right. You are my engineer. You're going to go over to door control for now. Hey, where is the horse died? You've clearly bested us. We re merely request our lives. They're offering two fuel. One drone part and 14 scrap. I can really use the fuel, so I'm actually going to accept. Alright, now that I've accepted, we are evacuating the section of the ship. Said, we are evacuating... Actually, just... Right... Close off that. Drop, at, uh, drop oxygen there entirely, then open these doors. So the concern that I had was that the fire was going to go through the doors. It takes fire quite a bit longer to go through doors than it does normally. Or than it would be if they were open. You notice that it spread qu pretty quickly in here. Um, when a system has taken enough damage where it drops all the way to zero, it causes one hull damage. That's actually what happened in here. You only have one engine. It doesn't take much to cause hull damage. Oops. Oop. There we go. Now we are going to close all the doors, reopen all the interior doors. This will allow oxygen to re 
um, equalize a little bit faster, as I previously mentioned. Go back in there, repair that up. Won't take very long with three people repairing. Uh, Zin Zin is going to go report to Medbay. Because slightly injured, might as well. All right, everybody's back. Everybody go back to stations, and we will go ahead and close interior doors. And we are back. Jen's nearly at max again. There we go. And now we go to the next sector. So this is where I'm going to stop it. I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll talk to you, for me, not very long from now, because I'm going to record the next one after taking a small break. Bye, Internet!